Okay, how's it going, guys? It's Corbin here from HighImpactWriting.com, and uh, continuing our series in uh, sort of outside-the-box freelancing videos. This is going to be a video about sort of the philosophical foundation for um, freelancing and business, and I'm sure we'll touch on some minimalism and uh, other, you know, sort of things like that. Uh, but this is going to be basically me talking about uh, why I went the freelancing route and why uh, my life in general kind of looks a lot different than most people's and uh, basically setting yourself up for a free life that allows you to do what you want over the long term which is actually a lot rarer than it sounds and a lot um, a lot uh, easier than it sounds in some ways if you know how to do it from the start. And so I'm going to be giving you what I wish I knew going into into this whole journey, and I hope it's helpful. And if it is, uh, I really encourage you to check out um, a book called How I Found Freedom in an Unfree World, which is part of what inspired this video. And uh, there's another uh, one of my favorite business books ever. It's literally called Anything You Want uh, by Derek Sivers. Uh, he founded a company called CD Baby and sort of, he kind of like busts all the rules and is like an anti-business guru in that book. It's a really short, uh, punchy read that you could read in like one sitting and it totally changed my mindset. Um, and basically, you know, it got me thinking as business, as being... The way I think about business and freelancing is as a tool for freedom and living a life that I want, okay? And a lot of people don't think of business as that, you know? Most people I talk to are like, oh, how do I how do I grow my business? How do I do more money than I did last year? How do I get more clients? How do I get more work? Um, I want my business to be as small as it possibly can and as simple as it possibly can uh, to set me up for as much freedom as it possibly can. And that's a very different mindset from what you're going to encounter for most people. So you need to be careful who you take advice from depending on what kind of life you want and what kind of business you want, okay? And so what do I mean by that? Um, well, like I was just saying, like a lot of people are just trying to bring in as much money as possible. Uh, and so their the actions that they take to do that are going to be very different from someone who is like trying to um, basically, you know, get out of the rat race as quickly as possible, let's say. So let's say, um, you know, when I graduated college, I had a few freelancing clients and was like, I was uh, trying to decide whether I wanted to do this um, full time or whether I needed to like go get a real job, basically. And almost everyone tried to talk me into like getting the real job, but I ended up going the freelancing route. And one thing that really helped me with that is figuring out uh, what I call a minimum viable income, okay? Or you can think of it as like a freedom number, but basically this is a number that, uh, you know, I like to think of it as a monthly figure. So for me right now, it's probably around like two grand just to be transparent with you. I have a car that I'm in right now that's fully paid off. Um, so my biggest, biggest expenses are, uh, just food and shelter. Uh, I'm a young guy, so my insurance is not crazy in terms of like healthcare and stuff like that, which is nice. Um, but yeah, around two grand a month, I can actually live a very comfortably, uh, very comfortable life. I have my own place. Uh, it's a two bedroom place. It's like five times bigger than what I would ever realistically need. Uh, <laughs> and so, you know, this uh, minimum viable income can be a lot lower than most people will have you believe uh, because most people are basically trained to spend money on things that they don't need. And this is where the minimalism part comes into this. Um, if you figure out how to live on less than you make, um, you're going to find out that you don't need to make as much money as people convince you. Okay, so, you know, there's a lot of people who are like, oh, I live in the, in the Bay area and I make, um, 200 grand a year and oh my gosh, it's so great. Um, what you have to realize is that like once taxes and rent and like higher cost of living are accounted for in that, that person is probably living like paycheck to paycheck. Um, and this is not me trying to poo poo anyone else's lifestyle or choices. Uh, it's just, again, you know, the lower you can get that monthly figure, uh, 
that basically the faster you are going to get to freedom and not having to answer to anyone you don't want to. And so, you know, two grand a month, um, I could get that from one client, okay? And so that allows me to basically sleep easy at night. Like if I lost everything, all I'd have to do is get one or two clients and basically I could live a pretty comfortable lifestyle. And again, well, I, I did my last video, like let's say worst case scenario, my whole freelance business goes underwater somehow. Um, you know, you can make two grand a month flipping stuff on eBay and Craigslist and uh, doing moving gigs for people um, or, you know, just being a personal trainer or um, starting a blog that you own or, you know, working in a freaking restaurant as like a bartender or a server, which I used to do. So um, basically what I'm trying to say is like, if you if you have a life situation that you're not happy with, figure out the minimum viable price you can pay. This is a big thing from that Harry Den book, um, um, How I Found Freedom in an Unworld, in an Unfree World. There's always a price you can pay that will get you out of any situation, um, unless you're like in prison or something, which <laughs> you're probably not watching this video in that case. Um, but for everything else, there's always a price you can pay uh, to get out of uh, whatever situation you're in. And in some cases it's monetary. So like two grand a month, maybe for you, it's three grand, maybe it's one grand. Um, I used to share an apartment with other people and my expenses were way lower than they are now actually. Um, but sometimes this, um, perceived cost to get out of whatever situation you're in can be psychological. And so what you're going to realize too, is that people, will try to talk you out of this lifestyle, even if you're doing quite well for yourself, um, like I consider myself to be, um, people will say like, um, oh, do you want to go back to school and get your MBA so you can have a real business? Oh, are you going to scale up and have an agency? Oh, why don't you have any employees? Oh, you know, why don't you move into a nicer place? Why don't you have a house? Why are you running an apartment? Oh, why don't you have, why don't you drive a new car? Why are you driving a used car for all these years? It's got like uh, almost 70,000 miles on it. You know, it's time, time to trade that in. So you have a monthly car payment, which raises your expenses uh, drastically. Um, you know, basically all these people, they mean well, but you have to look at their life and the life most people lead is they are giving their time away to people who have control over them and uh, trading their time each day to do something that they don't really like. And so that's why you see, you know, most of these ultra high income people, um, plenty of unsuccessful people too, but even these like supposedly, you know, white collar types, you get like the stereotype of like the white collar alcoholic who is like supposedly super successful in their career, but then they come home and, you know, need to have like three drinks every single night to like relax because they, they have a super stressful, like high pressure job that they don't even like. Um, and so, you know, the majority of their life is spent doing things that they'd rather not do. Um, and so this video is to help you avoid that if you want. Um, and, uh, yeah. So the first way to do that is by hitting that minimum viable income. And again, making it as easy to achieve as possible by getting it as low as possible. Uh, the other thing that's a good idea that's helped me a lot, um, is having, a you know, relatively high liquid savings. So again, saving more than you make, but also, um, keeping that, you know, investing some of it, but also keeping some of it in cash so that, you know, if an emergency comes up or you have no work coming in for like six months, for some reason, you have enough money to live off of without, um, doing something drastic basically. Um, okay. And, um, yeah, the other thing I would say is, um, just again, harking in on this, like, there's a saying from the movie, uh, the devil's advocate, it's an Al Pacino quote. And, uh, at one point or not Al Pacino, but <laughs> the character is, uh, John Milton. Uh, but the movie is kind of like inspired from paradise lost and the author of paradise lost was John Milton. It's a long story, but it's a good movie. Um, but anyways, the idea behind the worst vice is advice is like, you have to be very careful about who you listen to. Um, because again, you know, if you look up to someone who is running, like they're making a million dollars a year, let's say, but they have like a dozen employees and, uh, they work 70 hours a week and, um, 
you know, their monthly, their minimum viable income each month is 20 grand. Um, that person is living a, di a very different life from what you may want to live, okay? And I've found for myself that I don't want to live that life. Again, I don't want employees. I don't want a dozen clients. Um, I don't want a huge huge house and car payment every single month. Um, I don't want my monthly expenses to ever, ever be above three or four grand, to be honest with you, ever. So, um, you know, choose your gurus carefully. Um, think carefully about your freedom. And there is always a price you can pay to get the life that you want. You just have to figure out what it is. And uh, if you have any more questions relating to this, uh, let me know in the comments because uh, it's something I think about a lot. And uh, maybe I'll do more videos like this on, uh, I guess, the, <laughs> the philosophical foundation of freelancing. Um, some good alliteration there uh, if people are interested in it. So anyways, it was, I hope it was helpful, guys. And like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.